everybody, Chaz Large here with another repair video for you and on the bench today something uh, a little bit unusual in that uh, we have a um, cassette deck but it is a cassette deck that's used for language training. Uh, this is a Kumba R393 uh, recorder um, and basically it's as far as I can tell it's a standard sort of cassette deck um, but it's got an amplifier etc in it and you've got um, five headphone outputs on it as well as a speaker and um, you've got line input a microphone input that's loose obviously the, the thing's been lost a remote control tone and volume uh, and a tape counter so uh, as far as we can tell that's uh, basically all it is it's portable in that uh, there's a speaker on the back as well um, there's a, a a label etc on the bottom here uh, model 393 is equipment it's uh, made by Coomba Electronic uh, in Worcester in the United Kingdom and um, it's also got uh, what I was going to show you on the back it's got a little battery compartment there which you can put some batteries in and make it totally portable so uh, quite a useful little device uh, for um, training languages or uh, whatever that you want to um, talk to one you know talk in one headset um, and uh, then uh, enable it uh, to be output to uh, multiple um, people at the same time so presumably for language training um, I, I picked this up off of ebay mainly because it looked odd and uh, and it need it's it says for spares not working so i thought it'd be an interesting little video um to make anyway i did power it on uh when i first got it just to make sure it wasn't going to blow up and uh it's got a very uh, nice long mains lead very <laughs> unusually long mains lead and if we power it on uh, there's no mains on off switch uh, that i could find anywhere on it hidden or otherwise so the power light comes on and there is a little bit of a, a noise from the internal speaker but if we press play um, the tape deck doesn't move you can hear that's coming from the uh, loudspeaker so the amplifier appears to be working the power light does flicker um, so we need to have a look inside so basically uh, it comes out from uh, the front panel so we're going to take this front panel off here get the old electric screwdriver which makes life a little bit easier and let's see let's uh, eject and then we can perhaps hold on to the case yeah there it is there it goes and it comes out like so a little bit of jiggling and the whole lot comes out quite easily so there we can see on the inside if we have a look on the overhead camera we've got uh, a loudspeaker uh, a mains transformer so the mains go straight into the transformer as far as I can tell there is no um, no switch or isolation uh, there's a, a box there with a a cover on it saying warning isolate mains before replacing so the fuse so there's obviously a fuse in that box and on the main circuit on the main chassis we've got a board here for the speakers for the headphones um, we've got the main amplifier board here presumably yeah there's a, a TDA 1905 IC um, there which is presumably the preamp board and then there's uh, going to be um, a big transistor there I don't know if it's a regulator it's got a bit of a heat sink on it and then we've got the deck here which is uh, a fairly standard sort of cassette deck mechanism as far as I can see uh, I just notice there's a little label it says if you cannot insert cassette fully plug into mains press play press stop insert cassette this condition can occur if batteries have expired or are not fitted oh, interesting there we go um, briefly looking at the deck I can actually see that it appears to actually be stuck in play mode because the pinch roller is up against the capstan all the time so it is not fully ejected so the mechanism appears to be jammed um, 
you can't quite see that unless I put it there and do a refocus. Let's see if we can do that. All right. So we can see in there that the cassette deck is actually in play mode. The, the pinch roller is up against the capstan. So the deck is actually stuck in play mode, which is probably why it's not uh, not working properly. I'll switch back to autofocus on that camera and just leave it and hopefully it will keep itself reasonably in focus. Uh, but we'll go to the bench wide because we can see a little bit more uh, about what's going on here. So I think the thing to do is to power down and take this mechanism off of the um, front chassis. Sadly, everything's wired. There's no plugs and sockets, so making life a little bit more awkward. Um, but the deck itself appears to be held in by one, two, three, four screws into the plastic surround. Let's get those out. Yep, so the deck comes away from the insides, which may be a little bit easier, but I doubt it actually look at but there we are we can get a bit closer at it now and we can see a little bit more what's going on talk about awkward right so i think Yeah, is that deck driven? Ah. Right, so the mechanism is moving. Right, I just realised you can't see that. And I'll get a little bit more light on the subject with my overhead light here. It should give us a little bit more light. where we're working so i'm physically turning the mechanism uh, the uh, pulley on the inside which turns the uh, take up spool and you can see the take up spool is rotating but the the deck has actually come into um, play position if i crank it backwards the deck is going back out so the obviously the deck mechanism is motor driven so we need to find out why, when we turn it on, that we're not getting any motor drive of its own. So, ah, uh -huh. so obviously that little indicator there that says. Um, if you can't insert cassette fully, uh, plug into mains, press play, press stop, insert cassette. So obviously what happens is at some stage that cassette deck just gets locked in a position until you reset it. And from then on it seems to be okay. So let's put a tape in and see what she sounds like. So it looks like there is actually no fault at all. It's just stuck. Let's play it. Ah. Right, I've put a tape in, but it's just not doing it. And now it's it's stuck again. Right, so yes, it, it just got itself in that jammed position once more. Let me make sure my cassette is okay. Yeah, there's no... Just in case there's something funny about that cassette, although I don't think it is. Let's put that one in and press play. 
and it goes it's low its mechanism is moved to the play position but it's just not turning so is that the motor the motor is actually spinning i can hit feel the the motor is spinning so i think we know what the answer is there don't we it's a drive belt yeah so when i put put the cassette in press play it loaded up so far and then it wouldn't proceed any further i put my finger onto the uh the pulley on top of the motor and i could feel the motor turning so the drive belt has obviously gone slack right let's see what we've got to do to change this drive belt i think to start off with we've got to remove this circuit board off the back we can unhook the drive belt from the motor pulley there that's okay we can unhook it from the take up spool pulley which is in there that white one there but it also goes around the capstan which is uh, got a plate on the back end of it so we can't get at the screws for that because it's hidden by the circuit board so let's take the circuit board off okay now if you're taking circuit boards off of uh, mechanisms and so on the thing to be aware of is you've got uh, on a cassette deck you've got a system switch for record playback and that's this big long uh, thing here so that goes backwards and forwards when you press record or playback and this has got a mechanism uh, a lever which goes into that so when you're putting it back you must make sure that you get it in the same position otherwise you could end up putting the the mechanism back together in record mode you put your favorite tape in and you accidentally erased it i'm speaking from personal experience because i have done that right so i'm maneuvering this to a point where let's see if i can actually get to that belt that screw without having to take lots of bits and pieces off and i may be able to just get my screwdriver in there to that screw yes i can now hopefully nothing is going to go springy springy because there is a lever under there with a spring on it and the other side of that right can i lift that enough to get that drive belt off i think i can yeah so with my tweezers i'm just going to gently ease that drive belt between the there we are and then drop it down over there so there's our drive belt now that drive belt doesn't feel as though it's gone blacky i think it's just either slipping or perhaps there's grease on these pulleys don't think so i'll give them a clean up with some isopropyl anyway and put the belt back and then we'll just try it one more time so. we'll clean up the capstan first There's a little bit of grease on there. We'll do the idler pulley. Yeah, I'll just use the other end to clean up the motor pulley. See if I can get in there to. use a screwdriver to just turn that motor so 
Yeah, that was a quite a bit come off that that there. I just use a bit of the edge of this, a clean bit of this thing, and I just grip the drive belt and pull it through, just in case there's any grease on the drive belt itself. Oh. Quite a bit on there actually. I'll just give that a quick wipe off with a bit of tissue paper. So, okay, let's pop it back. I'm going to put it under the capstan pulley first. Hopefully just should be able to just push that over there because that's going to be the most awkward one to get back Okay, so now we've got that round there, around that pulley. And then put my tweezers through there and see if I can grab hold of it. There we go. Okay. So let's pop that screw back on there. Okay. Drop the circuit board back on there. Make sure that pin is engaging with the switch correctly just here. Seems to be. Okay, so having put that back in there, let's give it power it back on and see what happens. And press play, it's engaged, it's running, and there's quite a bit of tension on it. So let's try putting a test tape in there. I don't know what this has got on it, and it's still doing the same. Yeah, motor's still spinning, belt's not turning. No, so obviously, I can turn it by hand, but no, I think that belt. It's a shame, as you can see, it's obviously working. Now, the other thing I can feel, putting my finger on that pinch roller, is there's a great big dent in it, which means the pinch roller would have to be changed anyway. I'm just wondering whether that's actually... Oh, and I'm also looking at that head. I don't know if you can see. 
the record head I think has been bent down where somebody's tried to put a cassette in and force that shut so I would guess this problem with um, the mechanism whatever the mechanism is wherever they source this mechanism was a problem for this company I don't know if they're still in existence but I'm just going to try and lever it back into position I don't want to put a screwdriver down it because it's most of my screwdrivers are magnetic so I might put plastic first then put a screwdriver in and lever it that way I think it could be the indentation actually rather than the drive belt being slack it's, it seems to have got quite a bit of strength to drive it although you can just see that if I get the camera there you can see if I stall it you can see the the belt there just bending which means the belt's probably on its last legs okay um, now what else have I got I can put down okay I'm going to risk and just bend that whip bang I'm not particularly too worried if I don't get it down. This is really just a, a bit of an interesting thing to see if I can make it work. Let's see if that's made a difference. Yeah, it's working now. So obviously the main problem was that head there. So I should have shown you that I'm having now bent the head out slightly using a, a bigger screwdriver. Now putting the tape in, um, I can actually get it to play back. So let me get my YouTube music test tape, wherever it's gone. So probably Yeah, that's working now. So that's probably the fault is the fact that somebody tried forcing a tape in. Okie dokie. So the next thing to just quickly test and see if it's got that uh, pinch roller has got a, uh, a, a big kink in it. Let's put in a one kilohertz test tone tape. Right, so to see if we if it is playing back at the right speed, I've a frequency counter um, app on my phone. So there's a little uh, app, free app that you can get, and it shows the frequency of the audio it's picking up. So as long as I don't say anything while I'm playing this, it should read the frequency. And the test tape I've got in there is one kilohertz. So let's try that. nine hundred and ninety three hertz or thereabouts that's pretty good and the other side of the tape should be three kilohertz or three point one five I can't remember which three kilohertz so it's running a little bit slow mind you having um, got a head that is not fully properly aligned that could have an effect quite often with cassette decks there will be in the um, mechanism a hole and there seems to be one there but I don't know when whether we can get a screwdriver through there with the door on we can't so we're gonna to have to take the door off or the door cover off which comes off like that pretty good 
put the test tape in and now what we should be able to do is when it's in play we can adjust the azimuth of the head with that screw this is it's a flat head with a cross head on it so using a nice high pitch frequency you can hear it the azimuth going in and out so once you're in you get the highest frequency you can um, on a wave four on a oscilloscope if you were doing it sort of like professionally you would put an oscilloscope on the output and then you would adjust it for peak output to get that right and then what you would do is you would apply some Loctite as you can see the manufacturer already, already did on this screw just to hold it in place so what I usually do is a little bit of nail varnish, which works just as well. But before we do any more, we'll just clean off the heads. I'm going to get rid of that cleaning stick and get a new one. We can see there's oxide from the tape on the erase head. So let's just get rid of that. And again on the playhead. I'm also going to clean off, I'm going to put it into play with the door open. And I'm just going to let the, um, the cleaning bud run on the pinch roller. Just to get any gunk off of that and also on the capstan like so so looks like we've uh, we've got a successful repair and basically I can add this machine to my little stock of bits and pieces of old audio technology which you never know can come in handy in the future audio dubbing or um, recovering tapes or whatever now I could adjust the speed if I wanted to because we're lucky enough on this deck on the back of the motor we can see there's a little hole so using the three kilohertz test tape ah. See, now, ah, oh, I've got it because I've got it in play. I thought, oh, hang on, the volts come back again. <laughs> I forgot to take it out of play. Bring my little frequency counter back up. Yeah, there we are. So we can see the frequency at the same time as we're adjusting. Now we want a little adjustment tool. And I use this little adjustment tool, which is a, 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 um, brass uh, tool uh, for making adjustments and hopefully I should be able to put that into this little rubber hole and get in there and find a screw which I can just feel there so I'll put it into play and we can see that's somewhere around three kilohertz so I need to keep quiet Right, that's close enough to 3 kilohertz for me.
and we'll turn it around and try the other tape the other side and that should be one kilohertz Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy with one kilohertz. That's pretty much good enough for me. So, that's the way I adjust the tape speed on a cassette. And it seems that we now have a fully working mechanism. All we've got to do now is put it all back together. So, I shall move my light out of the way. and start the reassembly process. Right, just before we put it fully back together, let's just Give it a quick little dust off in the compart compartment. Put the door back on. It's just it's a couple of little clips. That closes up. We've got the brush. Might as well go over all this dust on here as well. And then with a little bit of jiggery, we have it nearly back together. on funny enough it's actually got quite a nice sound to it because it's quite a big speaker at the back there bit of bass boost and of course what's the golden rule before you put things back together test 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 and what didn't I test I didn't test recording ha ah, silly me right well we've got an internal microphone we've got an external microphone we've got a line input let's just try assume that the internal microphone is working and press record and play together now there's no record level meter, but uh, reset the counter to zero. Uh, let's just see if that is actually working and uh, making a recording through the internal microphone. Now there's no record level meter, but uh, reset the counter zero uh, let's just see if that is actually working and uh, making a recording through the internal microphone well it certainly seems to be recording through the internal microphone of course um, to make it fully tested we need to uh, find a microphone to plug into the front here to test that as well and some headphones to check the headphone sockets right be right back Okay, so I've got my headphones and I've got a microphone. Let's plug the headphones into the master socket first and put our test tape in. Okay, 
think it's working on uh, that headphone socket. And on that one as well, but it... But when the master headphone socket is plugged in, the speaker is turned off. So I just need to find a little headphone adapter to plug into there just to turn off the internal speaker. Right, just a quarter inch headphone adapter there so I can plug headphones and check the others without the outside internal speaker working. Yeah, that one's working. Try the next one. That's working. That's working. That's working. Okie dokie. So all those sockets are working good. And next thing we need to do, take that test tape out, put the recordable one in and try recording via the oh microphone now need to replace the missing nut i'm going to borrow one from the headphone socket in the middle there to do that i've got some of these sockets somewhere so it shouldn't be too difficult to find one of those there we are the microphone is on so let's try one two three let's reset to count as a zero and we're now testing with the uh, external microphone one two three one two three one two three one two three let's reset to count as a zero and we're now testing with the uh, external microphone one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yep. So, apart from the line inputs, which I would have to make up some sort of a, a lead for using a DIN plug, which I've probably got one somewhere, and the external speaker, which uses uh, the little two pin. I know I've got a speaker somewhere with that plug on it, but to be honest, I'm not that bothered. I've tested the main functionality. I've tested that it, it works on internal external microphone that the controls work it records and plays back i'm happy with this so uh, i'm pretty sure that this is now a fixed repair thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed it and uh, look out for some more videos coming away i've been working on an awful lot of stuff uh, but spare parts has been the main problem so i'm waiting for some spare parts to come in mainly from China, and they take forever, as you know. So look back uh, in the future, and you should hopefully see a few more videos coming your way. Thanks very much for watching. Cheerio now.